video, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, we're gonna look at something coming to Office from a Power BI perspective. I wonder what that could be. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, David Eldersfeld, who was an MVP, he's now at Microsoft, work with him every once in a while, great person. He put out a tweet looking at an item that's in the release wave, which talks about Power BI becoming available for office installations. <gasps> So there's a lot of things around this, and I wanted to just talk about this a little bit because there was a there was a Twitter thread <laughs> that went on for a little bit. There were questions with this, obviously. There's concerns from enterprise organizations about how this works and how is it going to affect them? Because the general idea of this is that if you're installing it through Microsoft 365, Power BI will actually be packaged with Office. So one of the challenges that we have with deploying Power BI Desktop from an enterprise perspective is that you have to package it every month and then you gotta go push it out. If folks are installing it from the Microsoft store, it's updated automatically, but it's it's a little harder to manage. What most organizations do is if you have Office 365 and you're, you know, you've got like an E5 or E3 subscription, Office is just deployed and managed within your organization. So the idea here is that Power BI Desktop is going to be included in that installation. Yay! So for a lot of organizations, this is actually cool, but there were some concerns on that Twitter thread. So one is, wait a second, this means everyone in the organization is going to get Power BI Desktop. Yeah, well, if they have Office, they would get Power BI Desktop as well. Whether they use it or not is another question. It's just an app that gets installed as part of Office. There were also some other concerns about the fact that, look, you know, we want to maybe wait and test out Power BI Desktop before we push it out to the enterprises. So that's something as well. The release wave item called out September 2022. And so there were questions about, wait a second, is this available now? Like, is this actually hitting my users? One thing I loved was Mo Ali. He's a PM on the Power BI product team. I look at him as the source of truth on this topic. He made a couple comments on Twitter that were actually super helpful. One is that this is being rolled out slowly. So there's a couple organizations that are going to get this up front. The general idea is that most organizations should have this by early next calendar year. So in early 2023, I actually looked in my production tenant on the guy in a cube tenant, and I don't have it yet. He also commented in a separate tweet that this is actually something where if you have a slower deployment of office, Power BI Desktop will actually still update monthly. So from an actual deployment perspective for Power BI Desktop, I get it. It helps keep that updated and managed. That struggle is real. There's a lot of overhead with packaging it, getting it approved, testing it, and that results in a lag. They may be a couple months behind on Power BI Desktop, or they may choose to do it quarterly because of that overhead. I know of a few enterprise, large enterprise customers that are gonna be very thankful for this update. The other thing Mo called out was the fact that you can opt out of this. It's not something that is required. I poked around a little bit, and I'm, I'm gonna take a guess at this is how it's going to work. I will absolutely follow up with another video once this rolls out to my tenant to actually walk through how this works. So to fall this talking, let's head over to my desktop and take a look. So I am in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this all admin centers down on the bottom. When I go in there, you will actually see office configuration. Now within office configuration, you've got a couple of things that you can do. You can do customization, all these other things. So let's go in and let's look at device configuration. And so from an organization standpoint, what you could do is we could just create a configuration. This is the configuration file. We can choose, you know, what is it that we want to deploy with this configuration? I can say, Office 365 apps for the enterprise. In this view, I'm actually running the E5 license. Should be similar for E3 as well. And you can make some other choices here, but I'm just gonna stick with the Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise. And if we come down, you can choose the channel that you want. So these are the different delayed items. So you do current channel, you can do monthly enterprise channel, the semi-annual enterprise channel. This is where they get deployments every six months. So understand that in that channel, you would still get Power 
RBI desktop monthly. It was called out in the release wave that those users will not be impacted until next year. So that's going to be a slower deployment if you're looking for that. So I'll stick with current channel and then you can choose the version. You can do latest or a different build. This is where I can actually turn off apps that don't get included in that deployment from Office 365. What you don't see here is Power BI desktop, but I think there will be an additional thing here with a toggle. So you can basically say, don't include Power BI desktop. You can have different configurations for different users. This is something I will look at more once it's actually available and I'll, and I'm assuming you can do this for certain security groups and different channels and releases and whatnot. But for the majority of your users, you could just turn this off and go back to the package deployment that you've been doing. So it's not like you're blocked out of that which is good. Ultimately, I just wanted to make you aware that this is coming, so you're ready for it. You can start having conversations with your Office 365 admins that are in your organization and start planning how you wanna handle this. And like I said, once it's actually out, I will do another video and just really walk through this and show you the ins and outs of it. All right, I wanna hand this over to you. What do you think? What do you, are you ready for this? Are you excited about this? Is this gonna help you? Or you're like, eh, I'm gonna turn it off. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.